I think it's time to start. I see standing people. So we are right here. There are some chairs here. They are not as uh, dangerous as you think. Uh, uh, so, uh, chairman of uh, our board, trustees, uh, colleagues, uh, it's, uh, it's a real uh, pleasure and honor, actually, uh, to have with us Kyriakos uh, Kokkinos, who has been out in the family for a long time now, has been trustee of the uh, craft board for a number of years, member of our executive committee, uh, but he's here to give us uh, this uh, very important colloquium uh, today in his new role, uh, new challenge, I would say, uh, is the founding uh, chief scientist of the uh, Republic. The, this office did not exist before, just started now, and he is appointed to it, and therefore uh, it's a defining role. Uh, Cyprus, when it was formed, is a republic, I'm saying this for the benefit of our non-Cypriot. Uh, 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 the Constitution did not know what research is, so there was no portfolio for research in the Constitution. Uh, so the, there is no Minister of Energy, there is uh, no uh, portfolio in any ministry, so research, the fact ended up in the Ministry of Finance. Uh, which is a little bit uh, unusual, but it's for historical reasons. And this is the first uh, official recognition, I would say, uh, by the government that there is an independent office, very important to move, far more important than other countries has, have uh, chief scientists, but uh, they normally are under the Ministry of Research. Here there is no Ministry of uh, Research, so it's far more important than, let's say, chief scientist in Israel or in chief scientist in the UK and so on. Uh, so the big challenge for uh, Kyriakos is to define actually uh, the office as not only implemented because it didn't exist uh, before. <coughs> so uh, the Republic did very well, uh, found the right person as you will, uh, most of you know. Um, uh, Kyriakos uh, is uh, distinguished uh, professional, engineer, technologist with uh, long service in the research and innovation sector. He has been in uh, IBM uh, for many years. Uh, he served as IBM executive director and partner IBM Europe for over 30 years uh, with experience in technology consulting and services sector most recently being the leader of the European consulting practice in cognitive computing and analytics and in artificial intelligence. Uh, so uh, it's one of the, uh, if you wish, of the benefits of having prominent Cypriots abroad because uh, it's brain drain when they go away, but they, when they return, they bring a lot back. So it's a real privilege uh, to, for Cyprus to be able to draw such uh, distinguished uh, uh, leaders in innovation and uh, cutting edge technologies uh, to lead this office. He has been the recipient of numerous awards, I'll say only a few, uh, I won't take all the time, and recognitions for professional excellence, including the Business Leader of the Year Award in 2016 by the Cyprus Chamber of Commerce and Quality Leader Award of 2015 by Cyprus Quality Association, etc. So he serves in many boards of uh, directors uh, of uh, organizations, including chairman of the board of the Research and Innovation Foundation, uh, formerly the Research Promotion Foundation. Notice that innovation now is in the title uh, of the of the RPF. Uh, members of the board of directors of SIBA, and uh, of course we have been privileged uh, to have him with us. As I said, for many years. I'll stop here because you are here to hear, and you're starting to hear, not me, uh, but to hear the Kiriak. Before I start, because there are two, four, six people standing, there is one chair, two, three chairs, four chairs here. Thank you so much. It's not such a hard 
can't see, don't, 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 don't be afraid. There is one more chair here and another chair here. And the ladder, there are three. Chairman of the board, thank you for coming all the way from Finland for <coughs> probably the fourth or third time this, uh, this year uh, for working with us and it's an honor, uh, dear trustees, dear colleagues and collaborators, and dear questions, of course, thank you for your kind words. Uh, what I will try to share with you is my aspiration and my passion on how we create a knowledge based economy in Cyprus, but you are the few. It's something that needs to come from you. My job here is to facilitate, is to help you. In some aspects, and in some cases, to take the lead and, and, and show the way forward. But at the end of the day, it's you and all the other people that are knowledge workers, at the graduate, undergraduate level, postdocs, working in, in, in the industry that uh, will create the cycles of the future and uh, it's an existential matter, it's not just a matter of choice, it's an existential matter because if we want to really excel in a global economy, we need to invest more on research and innovation so that we make our country, uh, it's a matter of economic competitiveness, we make our country more competitive but at the same time, it's a social obligation because social innovation is the key for prosperity and happiness. So what I will share with you is the global scale, how innovation and research uh, is uh, one of the key attributes of every societal and economic uh, uh, fabric of, of every country and, 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 and the planet Earth uh, overall. Uh, and then we will come down, to, we will focus, we will zoom down to the Cyprus reality. So you see it as a work, technology, so let's go manual. After all, I've been in IBM. You know, IBM stands for that, it's better manual. something like a, a lecture. The bigger picture, the first, the second, the third industrial revolution. What is the fourth one? The first one, the third one is the information age. The, 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 the second one is electricity and industrialization. The, four, the, the first one is steam and uh, how it helps agriculture and, uh, and productivity and, pro and production. What is the fourth though? Is the technology and digitalization of everything. Is what is possible through the Internet of Things, through the digital, through the artificial intelligence, through the new kind of mathematics, which is not a new kind, it's just repackaging the old mathematics that we knew. Even artificial intelligence, as you very well know, is not something new. Artificial intelligence has been uh, in the labs and, uh, since the 60s, especially in the United States, but it was a technology limitation to scale up because of the cost of technology, even the lack of technology to accommodate all this uh, storage and processing capacity that uh, was required. So the fourth industrial revolution is happening because of the accelerated uh, technology parameters that are, in, are coming out from labs like uh, Cyprus Institute Labs and, and, and other research and, uh, institutions in universities but also in, in companies. But there is another dimension that is impacting the fourth industrial revolution. The key global challenges that are not necessarily technological. Challenges like the aging population. How socially, economically and technology can support an average age of living of 90 years old. Which will be not far, I mean I'm sure you will reach at that age. Uh, 20 years back it was 77, 
now it's 81, 82. And this is increasing. What kind of what kind of social care systems do we need? What kind of healthcare, pharmaceutical uh, infrastructure, agricultural production for food that will <coughs> help us have quality living of 90 or 100 year old people? Uh, the moving of population. The uncontrollable moving, like the immigration in Europe through Syria and, uh, and, and North Africa, what kind of diffusion, how do we get them diffused to be productive elements of our, in the fabric of the European societies, rather than rejecting them in a forcefully and unpleasant, and I dare to say, discriminatory manner. Uh, the, co the shift of economic power, the battle between China and, 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 and uh, the United States, but also what is the position of uh, what is the position of Europe into this? And unfortunately, our position we're not in a very good position. It's like two giants uh, fighting between each other, and we are starting and we are like this. We are not behaving in the proper way. How can we have a, a voice? but also be part of and declare our fair share as an economy and as society in the European Union and Europe as a whole, because it's not just European Union countries, uh, to be an equal partner in this, uh, in this uh, matter. The climate change where the Institute is, is excelling uh, in, in, on research and innovation, uh, the climate change is something that is happening. How technology, how research will help? So you are not here to just get a post, uh, 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 as a postdoc to get a salary and a degree and some experience. You are the generation that has to solve these societal, global challenges, these global problems. Think wider and think at this dimension that will make you happier and more creative on, 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 the, on your job. And you will see your career excelling, and you will be pro uh, and you will have a prosperous life if you think bigger. That you are here to solve. You are part of an ecosystem to solve very important uh, challenges of our uh, planet. As I said, technology, of course, it's it's an enabler, and it's it's also a kind of a key driver to solve these problems, but also in some cases technology is part of the making of the problem. Like in artificial intelligence, if the artificial intelligence capability falls, uh, is used by the wrong people, uh, it's in the wrong hands. So professions are being changed uh, because of virtual reality capabilities. The profession of architect, the profession of uh, of training, uh, of pilots, or training of, uh, of martial arts, uh, everything is being impacted. So what you are doing is not just for your silo profession. It has a horizontal and cross-industry impact on everything you do. So it's a habit of mind and a state of mind. And if you are not on that state of mind, try to reflect and rethink what is my actual job? What am I doing as a professional? As a professional scientist, as a professional researcher, as a professional professor? Uh, in mobility, in, in, in the car industry, you know, car, there's also the biggest car industry today. The car is just a digital platform on wheels. It's a digital platform on wheels. Drones. I think that I don't need to say more about drones. How they are reshaping our life. And we are at the infancy stage. Even the way we communicate with Santa Claus has changed. <coughs> So, again, the 
fourth industrial revolution. Another aspect that is very important is that the fourth industrial resolution, because of its openness and collaboration and interconnectivity, is increasing the need to rewrite the book of cybersecurity. When I was a student, security was a very minimal chapter on my whole curriculum. When I started in IBM, it was a, a slightly bigger chapter, but there was no internet and no connectivity. It was for those that the SNA, uh, Security Network Architecture, and it was not more than three books to read and learn, and one week of training to learn about it. Today, it's a whole new world. By 2030, even with the most conservative estimates, the shift of economic power is going to China. The green is 2016. 2030 is there. China and the United States. If you add up all the Germany, Kingdom, and France together, there will be half of that of the United States. Okay? So the prosperity and the economic wealth of nations is changing. And you need to, uh, to understand what does it mean for my role, my profession, and my specialization. Even the EU competitiveness index is, it has changed, and, and you see that uh, the green are the countries that are above one, and the rest are the countries that are low performers. And unfortunately, we are, as a country, we are the low performers. <coughs> our competitiveness is low. We rely heavily today, and our economic model, I'm very worried, I have to admit it, relies primarily on tourism, which has been always good since the 60s, but on the real estate as well. And the real estate is not sustainable business, and we need to be very careful. Our next big bet needs to be on <coughs> an innovative entrepreneurship, innovation, which starts from institutes like this, from the research, from the basic research. You will be of the fourth industrial revolution, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker. Our future cannot remain a scenario, a sketch, an idea, amongst others. We have to prepare the union of tomorrow, today. And I transpose this to our Cyprus re re uh, reality. We have to prepare Cyprus of tomorrow, today. And you are the today to make it. And research and innovation are crucial for our future. They are the only way to see most sustainable tackle low economic growth, limit on job creation and global challenges such as health and safety and food and oceans and climate energy. And this is something that is on the agenda of the European Union. Easier said than done. And you will see that our rate of progress is very, very limited. Our spending on research and development in Europe compared to the rest of our competitors is very, very low on average. So we know what we need to do, but not, we're just not doing it. We're doing excellent basic research across Europe. We're doing excellent basic research in Cyprus. And the fact that we just won three teaming programs uh, recently is an evidence that we are good on, on basic research. It's just that we do not translate this into competitiveness. We don't take the basic research to make it new product uh, from the stage of the startup company, then the pilot, proof of concept, commercialization. So when I said before you have to rethink your job, you rethink your job not just in terms of what industry and what is the aim of my job, but think that your job does not end with the publication of your uh, research work in a, in a famous uh, journal and you get so many views and so many citations. This is the start of a new journey. Go beyond that. <coughs> in
In terms of venture capital funds raised in billion euros in the United States, you see, the, 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 the difference is huge. What does it mean that our investment as Europeans goes in the United States? Because if I am a good researcher and I, I, I've spent so much energy, so many years of my work, and I do not find the money to start up a new company or a startup company, I do not have the incubation and the support ecosystem to help me out, I will either collaborate or move in Silicon Valley or in China or where else, where the money will come. And this is too bad because we are the creators of this basic research. We create knowledge that is used by others. So, in recognition of this, I will open the door because it's a bit uh, hot for everyone, I think. Um, we need to come up with some policies and some programs that uh, Public investment is complemented and stimulates private investment, and you cannot force a company to uh, you cannot force a company to innovate. You need to give them incentives, you give them to explain why, and you need to to help them understand the value that it's existential. It's a prerequisite for their sustainability. Regulatory frameworks fit for innovation, and in Europe we are not famous for that. We are famous for the opposite. Market creating innovation, EU wide risk innovation missions with bold ambitious goals, etc. Rapid dissemination of innovation and uptake skills. Uh, and, and entrepreneurial skills are our challenge. I mean, innovative entrepreneurship is something that needs to be uh, developed. And contribute to the modernization of university and public enterprises with the open science later. Now, I'm sure that all of you are aware of the Horizon 2020. What is the next? What follows? It's called Horizon Europe 2127. And we, as Cyprus, were after a much bigger chunk of money from Horizon Europe compared to what we had on Horizon 2020, although we have been very successful. Horizon 2020. Uh, big science deployed to me the problems. It's a vision oriented approach, which is an American uh, mindset. And, and what does it mean, mission oriented? It means that mission means a big societal or global challenge. And how do I break this down into initiatives? For example, if climate change is, is, is a mission, okay? This is a grand challenge. My mission is to have 100 carbon neutral cities by 2030, reach net zero greenhouse gas emission balance <coughs> of 100 European cities by 2030. This is the mission. Underneath that, you will see that a lot of disciplines, a lot of, of, of uh, research and innovation activities fall under this. So climate change is not just for atmospheric, for physicists to study the sky behavior. The, and the texture of the sky at any instant of time. Climate change means real estate, construction materials, environment, energy, food, mobility, behavior, social sector, and cross collaboration between building and carbon neutral industry. <coughs> so we see that there is an investment project that fall under one mission of a global challenge. And this is just an example. There are five missions under negotiation and discussion at the moment of the European Union. And, and by next year, you will see that this, uh, these programs will be stabilized and the funds for each one. So whatever you do next year, the five indicative broad areas of vision is adaptation of climate change, including societal transformation, cancer for the first time, 
a very specific health uh, aspect is coming up as on the agenda of research and innovation, cancer. Not just healthcare, cancer. Healthy oceans and natural waters, carbon neutral and smart cities, soil health for sustainable food. These are the five missions that are not yet finalized, but uh, are under discussion. Now, allow me to also take just one example of the gap between Europe and, 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 the, and the United States, or the rest of the, of the, of the globe. Uh, this is the digital gap uh, between uh, Western Europe, United States, China, and India, and Japan and Korea. Market capitalization of the top 20 unicorns are 2015, and the ratio didn't change. The absolute numbers have changed, but unfortunately, the ratio is the same. The big winner is United States, and then it's China and India, only 5% share. Market capital, you know what a unicorn company is, it's, it's, it's a startup company that has reached a 1 billion market capitalization value. Now some of them might be 30 billion, some of them might be just 1 billion. It's the threshold, and then you are a unicorn company that is very new, very young, very recent, it started as a startup company. Even if you look what are the top 20 companies in the United States, and what are the top 20 companies in Europe, across all sectors, all industries. <coughs> I don't think that you will find top 20 companies in Europe that didn't exist 50 years ago or 30 years ago. In the United States, the top 20 companies are all companies, with the exception of, of General Electric and IBM, that were not uh, exist. Exist in existence in the 80s. Top 20 Internet of Things firms. That's a revolution means Internet of Things, connectivity. How do I have sensors everywhere and I make sense from them through algorithms, data sciences, big data. Again, Europe is performing very, relatively very, very well compared to other geographies, but still it's 21%. And revenue top 10 big data firms in Europe. So this is the digital gap that we have, and, uh, and uh, in Europe is not a uniform country. Um, United Kingdom is the silent superpower on IT and the research and innovation. And then it's Nordics, Finland, and Sweden, and Denmark, and, and other geographies. So how can we be, we as a small Cyprus, how can we be uh, an integral part of the winners, not the losers. And here you see what are the key players. This is just for the digital, and it's from McKinsey, from, from the digital. I think it's February this year. This, uh, no, it's, it's June 2016. So, we in Europe, and I say we in Europe because then I will transpose to we in Cyprus and then we in Cyprus Institute. I say we in Cyprus Institute because, as you know, I feel part of you, part of Cyprus Institute. Uh, we, need, we cannot spread too thin. We need to be selective on our battles. And I honestly believe that for Europe, artificial intelligence, not because I was head of IBM in artificial intelligence, but because I believe that it's a horizontal uh, and has many applications across all industries. Big data and artificial intelligence are <coughs> one of the key areas that we need to focus, and we are not focusing adequately in Cyprus, and we can excel. The biggest, uh, the, the, the best mathematicians and data scientists are coming out from European universities. Unfortunately, at least a recent study shows that 67% of our output is going in the United States and China data sciences. Despite the fact that there is a shortage of data scientists in Europe, we produce them, we send them abroad, and then we don't have. Why? Simply because the venture capitalism is in place, simply because the ecosystem for them to have 
uh, an accelerated career path is not there. And simply because planet Earth is not a round sphere, it's flat. Mobility of, of workforces and the future of work has changed. I mean, working in London or working in, in Silicon Valley for a 25, 30 year old bright data scientist is not a consideration of the geographical position. It's a matter of money, but also incubation and knowledge creation. If, 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 if the, 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 the environment is right for them. So I believe that, ah, this is the February 2015, uh, and, 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 and this is coming from McKinsey. Tying Europe's gap in digital and uh, artificial intelligence, this is the, uh, the, the, the article. What they see is what I have been always saying, that's why I put this here, because it's, I, I've been saying this five years back when I was uh, in IBM, head of uh, Europe. Unless we focus on that and we help our universities and our data scientists to create pro new products and services, they will sell. They will use our investment <coughs> somewhere else. Now let's come to what about Cyprus, okay? So the bigger picture, Euro, now Cyprus. Cyprus economic model is not sustainable. We cannot rely on the big towers that are built in Limassol and on which is good. I'm, I'm not against it. In fact, I am in favor. But real estate alone is not an economic model that can take you far. Especially when 80% of our high school graduates go for a university degree, most of them with graduate and postdoc studies, and more than two thirds of them do not come back to Cyprus. So if my economic model is on real estate, but my investment on education, Every family, I have two kids as well, two kids, they're not kids, they're grown ups now. Uh, every family spends anything between 150 to five, half a million on the studies of their children. How are you going to recover, even on purely economic terms? What will be my return on investment on this money? Coming back and having a salary of 1,000 euros per month? If I am investing on knowledge creation professions, and I then, uh, as, 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 as a family, but my business model here does not make use of this knowledge-based profession, profession and investment, then there is an inconsistency. So this is a strategic mistake that we have been making for decades now, starting from the education system. Even the fact that we didn't pay the right attention to vocational training at high school level was a mistake. And we are paying for it now. Because we don't have technicians with, I mean, and we import uh, skilled workers, but blue collar workers. We, we import them. If you ask for uh, somebody to work uh, on the building, in the construction business, you don't find locals. Even, even on the, even on the uh, tourism industry, go to any restaurant. Every one secret you will find five uh, foreigners, some from Greece, a lot from other geographies. So we have the wrong economic model. <coughs> Cyprus, in terms of regional development, here it is, is somewhere there. And this is 0.56% of our GDP. We deserve much more because we pay a lot to make our children knowledge workers. In, this is for regional development, this is for innovation. Cyprus is considered to be a moderate innovator. Some maths. I am an engineer, those of you are engineers or scientists. Let's do some math. If I pay 
If today I hold 5% of my GDP is, uh, and our GDP, let's say, is 20 million, to go from 0.5 million, 0.5% uh, to 2%, it's 1.5 over a five year period, which is my mandate. That means that I need to put in the market 1.5% additional of my GDP, which is another 300 million with uh, minimum in the market in five years' time. That means that every year I need to ingest in a productive way, because even if I have the money, and the President of the Republic tells me, you know, how much money do you want? <coughs> President, I need half a billion this year to put it into resilient innovation. Doesn't mean it will go down the drain because we don't have the mindset, the infrastructure, the ecosystem is not ready to take this money and, and, and make uh, innovation uh, to work in favor of the economy. So it's a journey, it's gonna take time. You cannot go from 0.5% to 2%, where 2% is the average of Europe today. Israel is on a 3.6, I think. It's over 4, yeah, it's 4%. So it's a cultural shift in the state of mind that needs to be reconsidered. And you are part of this state of mind that needs to change. So our challenge here is not a matter of money. Our challenge is to come up with the right research innovation programs to educate our people that there is prosperity in the profession of a researcher and the researchers to be convinced that their objective is not just to publish papers on prestigious uh, scientific or other professional journals. Your role and your mission is much bigger to work for the competitiveness and prosperity of your country planet there, but also of your family and yourself. <sighs> Today, if I look on to the ecosystem of uh, research and innovation, it looks like this. Cyprus Institute is probably this, a small but very nice boat going in this direction. University of Cyprus probably is going in this direction. Another private university is going in this direction. A big company is going in that direction. It's an anarchy. <coughs> How can we go? How can we orchestrate our ecosystem to be like this? This is my mandate. But this is you. Think big. Think collaboratively. University of Cyprus is not your competitor. And Cyprus Institute is not the competitor of University of Cyprus or Tebak or European University. We are on the same boat to solve the same global challenges. And we have the same missions. Collaborate. Share knowledge. You are among the privileged ones to have the opportunity to create knowledge. Knowledge creation is like poetry, is like uh, literature, is like other arts. They are universal, they do not have competition. I don't think that Mozart considered competitor uh, Schubert or any, any other. I mean, each one of us, and, and we need to learn from their techniques and we need to work with them and openly share. I can, I know, easier said than done. But it needs to be done. So we are working uh, through my office and the National Board of Origin and Innovation on our strategy. And we have eight chapters. I will not stand on every single chapter. All I will say is that <coughs> governance, what does it mean governance? That it needs to be monitored. KPIs, how do we perform on this? How do we perform on that? Regular reviews, accountability and responsibility for the execution. 
Otherwise, the boat will not go in the same direction as I showed before. And this is my job. Come up with the strategy, but also the execution. And without governance, without the dashboard, to know where I'm going, because steering actions I need to, to, to take uh, when we see that there's a risk for derailment, or there is a derailment already that happened, things cannot move on. It's got to be a national strategy that is shared by the whole ecosystem. It's not just my strategy and then you have a different strategy. We need to embark on the same boat that when we all row this way, the other one is not going is rowing on a different direction. We all need to be. Research excellence is extremely important. It's something that it's one of the strong points that we have. And we need to protect and enhance and, uh, and, and promote it and support it. We don't have this kind of challenge. It's just to maintain and, and, and improve. But in terms of research quality in Cyprus, especially from this institute, I don't think that anyone can claim that we are not among the top performers. But we are not good at this. No less transfer and commercial exploitation. For this purpose, my plan, working as, and as chairman of the Research and the Innovation Foundation, I know it's the first time you hear this, uh, this acronym, it's IPE, Idrima Prothesis Erevnas in Greek. Uh, Idrima Prothesis Erevnas, or Research Promotion Foundation, has just changed its mission, its constitution, and the board of directors has been appointed uh, last week. And we undertake the innovation part as part of our mission. Why that? Because we are not just promoting research. It's, we are promoting innovation and research is the early stage of innovation. Entrepreneurship. For the past few months I've been talking to entrepreneurs. Before coming here I, I was giving another uh, speech at the uh, Cyber Chamber of Commerce. On Mon Monday, I was in, in Limassol to the Chamber of Commerce in Limassol. I meet with uh, uh, well, the Industrial Federation. I am trying to bring them closer to you, but you also have to go to you as researchers, but you also have to go to the enterprises and see how you can collaborate. Cultural change, international dimension, and congratulations, this institute has the international dimension and you should protect it. And communication. It's 50% hard work and 50% to show your work. Clear, loud communication. And consistent communication. The governance system uh, as said by the President of the Republic, this is the national board where I work, but my, also my office is responsible for the policy level, and uh, this is a new body that is being created. Every ministry, these are ministers, Minister of Education, Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Ministry of uh, Agriculture, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, etc. Every ministry will come up with its own research, <coughs> its own innovation use cases. I will be chairing a committee having under my review all the innovation initiatives that will start from the education. They are meeting with ministers every week to come up with two or three innovation initiatives or research initiatives. For example, with the Minister of Agriculture, we have a specific on initiatives on um, agrotech and the irrigation systems or food or climate change, etc. Now, Something that is not shown here, to, I did. This, this year is, is, the, is the policy recipient level. The incubators, the consultants, the investment promotion agency, the business agents, venture capital, financial institutions, and the financial instruments. The knowledge exploitation, which <coughs> means industry associations, social groups, public sector, and of course universities, research centers, etc. 
each one of these was a very separate small boat that I've shown before going in different directions. Now I will try to orchestrate, this is the responsibility of my office, all these and put them in contact. For example, if uh, a ministry has two or three initiatives, these initiatives need to be known and executed not within the ministry walls, but in collaboration with all the ecosystem here. The Research Promotion Foundation is the and the National <coughs> Knowledge Technolo uh, the Technology you know, uh, Transfer Office is at the operational level. This is what has been approved by the President of the Republic and the, and the Ministerial Cabinet when they decided to change. This is for the first time that we have something like this in Cyprus. And, well, it's not news anymore, uh, this will become a ministry. It's going to be a deputy ministry of research, innovation, and digital transformation. And it's on the making. Uh, if political obstacles do not block it on the way, it's just a matter of a couple of months. On research excellence, we need to develop a sustainable system for academia and research excellence based on leading international institutions and standards. This is chapter number three. No transfer and commercial exploitation. You know, you live, some of you have lived, have been in this valley of death. We do excellent research, we try to put it in the market, doesn't work. It doesn't work because we don't have the investor, we don't know how to do it, or we thought that this could be a good idea, but finally it's not a good idea because somebody else has done it. So how can we minimize this value of death by building a bridge that will take you from research to commercialization? And there are two kinds of, of value of death. One is the technological value of death, which means that technologically my, my paper, my idea, my research is great, but when it comes to the technological implementation at scale of a product, it doesn't work this way. There are other inhibitors or limitations. The other value, kind of value of debt is the commercial, the entrepreneurial, because of the commercial model or the lack of a rigorous business plan or IP rights that I didn't take care of properly and somebody else is stealing my ideas. So, <clears throat> from here up to here, we are doing extremely well. Our problem is from here to here. But trust me, this is the easier part. I'm not saying that it's easy, it's just that it's much easier. Because this here happens within a more controllable environment, your environment. When it comes to do all the product development, the market penetration, you need the multiplicity of stakeholders and skills and discipline. And that's why you, each one of us, needs to be an entrepreneur. In the sense that we need to understand all these things. <coughs> Innovative entrepreneurship. Now, how come we become innovative entrepreneurs? It's not a one man or one, man, one lady's job. It means that you need to the cross-fertilization of the osmosis with the ecosystem of the business world. So you need to go to the business world and show them what you, you can do, and they need to come to you. And this connectivity between the real business and uh, research is not in place in Cyprus. Cultural change. I've been discussing with the Research Promotion Foundation recently uh, about so that they need to, we need to move to new places or refurbish our existing premises. And you will not imagine what kind of resistance I have found. But they, each one wants to work on its own cubicle or its own office and they don't have the, the mindset that they need to need in a collaborative open space 
that is colorful, that's playful, that is starting even from these small things. But cultural change also has to do with other uh, inhibitors. And it starts with the brain and the way that we are being brought up. We need to invest more on science, technology, engineering, mathematics and arts. We're not doing well. On my age, well, in the 70s and 80s, when I was to make up my decision on what to study, STEAM was much higher in fashion, especially in engineering. There was no computer science at that time. <coughs> uh, computer scientists of the 70s were pro uh, mathematicians. Uh, you see that Cyprus is not performing very well either on this uh, on, 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 on steam. And uh, education, academia, and industry, they need to rethink the way we skill our people. Reorient curriculum towards the future of work, invest in STEM, introduce coding in school, promote automation technologies for new forms of learning. But also the industry is not performing well in Cyprus. Uh, all the job training and digital apprenticeships emphasize lifelong learning. There are very few companies that are investing uh, properly. On knowledge, in knowledge-based organizations, um, learning is mandatory in, 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 in its learning experience. It's not just a classroom learning. And there is a whole strategy for learning and the career framework that is associated with your learning capability. And learning in, in, in the corporate world where I come from is not just to know to learn new things and use new tools. No. Learning is how you create knowledge. For example, as an executive in IBM, you couldn't be uh, assessed as the, the scale for performance rating was from 1 to 5. If you didn't publish, even if you are a salesperson or a technical person, if you didn't create new knowledge and share it with others, then you cannot be a 1. You cannot be rated as 1. You could be probably 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. Why? Because it's not just a matter of reusing knowledge and be a good employee. You need to learn to create knowledge. It's a knowledge creation that gives a competitive advantage. And you are in the knowledge creation business, so you know better this than I do. In public sector, in private sector in Cyprus, this mindset does not exist. When I was uh, assessing an employee, I said, how many publications, even in business journals, because you are a business person. I do not expect to write scientific papers, uh, scientific publications. Um, a newspaper article. How many speeches you gave? How many uh, uh, in, in, in the enterprise world? How many speeches you gave to, to university students? What was the thing that you shared and what is the thing that you created? It's extremely important. In a knowledge-based economy, you cannot just say, oh, I am a good employee because I made so much money for my company. It's not good enough. It's a very short-term uh, approach. And most important, the international dimension. Think and act global. Global, Cyprus is not an island. Planet Earth is flat. This is part of our strategy. This is chapter seven of the book that is on the making. Uh, uh, we're having, I think it's on Monday, uh, our review. Uh, we have a, a team that is working on this strategy. I hope that by the end of May, this will be finalized and be presented to the President of the Republic. And communication. You need to tweet what you are doing. You need to feel proud of what you are doing. You need to share it. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? I hope I, I know that the temperature made the, the speech a bit uh, too hot. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very much for your talk. I have a comment and a question. Yes.
First a comment. Uh, before I came at the Cyprus Institute as a professor, I was CNRS research, uh, research director. So I come from a, a big institute in France which is doing uh, fundamental research. And I see <coughs> your strategy something that CNRS cannot do. CNRS is big, but has big difficulties to go to innovation. It's fundamental research. The big challenge of CNRS is now to go to innovation. And I think that you have started late, but you have started in the right direction. Because now big institutes like CNRS cannot go in this direction as fast as you want to go. Mm -hmm. First comment. The question is, for me, how you will fund your strategy? Will you have national flagship initiatives, or will you prepare us to hunt uh, Horizon, Twin, Horizon Europe uh, projects, to fund, to implement your strategy? Why? It doesn't have to be either of the two. Why can't it be both? Okay. I'm glad to hear for the first. Uh, <laughs> Because, as I said, I call my job facilitator and orchestrator. I'm not here to dictate what to do. I'm here to listen to you what we have to do as a country and do it together. And wherever you lack funds or skills or know-how, we need to provide this. And this is not a favor or a bonus. It's our obligation to make it happen. Okay? Thank you. <coughs> my my colleague uh, and, 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 and teacher. <laughs> he was a Proud student of mine uh, a few decades ago. <laughs> and I'm so happy to see that he's doing so well. Diago, <laughs> about 20 years ago, I was one of the so called country experts who went <coughs> to Brussels to tell the European Union our strengths and our weaknesses and such and innovation, etc., etc. I don't want to disappoint you, but most of the things that you showed me today, you were telling them 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. Either we couldn't convince them, which is my fault, usually, or the technocrats of the European Union couldn't convince their political masters. So, and one of the things that we discussed then was brain drain, and we had also brain gain. This is a good example of brain gain. And congratulations for being on the founder members I saw today or the Cyprus Academy, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I'm 70 almost. In 10 years from now, would I come here and listen to you again, showing me the same story? It's not your fault, but how can we convince people to go from the good basic reason to the product? There was a attempt to have a science and technology park. It doesn't have to be in one place, although there were a lot of arguments then, to try and get the money into innovation. So that's, that's the main problem, but uh, how do you think you can change this culture and mindset? It's not so easy. I don't, say, I don't want to say big words. It's just that I learned in my life uh, that uh, when I undertake a responsibility to lead a team, the team makes it. Not me, the team. And when my team is making it, I am behind the team. I'm not in front of the team. When the team has difficulties, I am in front of the team. So that's the way I'm going to work. A good thing, and what is different this time, is that this is at the highest level. It's one of the first time that we have a government system. Somebody is accountable for it at state level the head of the state. That's one big thing. The other is, if the ministry happens, which is planned, and I don't see any obstacles so far, uh, and no obstacles uh, are on the way, that will be, will be in two, three months' time, but even within the year, it's, it's good enough, then we will see signs of getting it right. As rightly said before, we are very small, and if we get our act together, we can make miracles. It's like Siftaki. You, you start slow, but then you run fast, and you end up with a, a, a good uh, uh, dance. The other thing that I, I want to clarify, don't wait to see visible big things happening in one or two years' time. Low hanging fruits, we will try to get them and take the benefit and the juice out of them. But it's a journey. 
And the most difficult part of this journey is one is the cultural change that starts from not, not from uh, the educational system only, but from pedia. We start with the family and the way we bring up our children. So it's a journey of 10, 15, 20 years. I will not see the results in 20 years' time, but I will start gradually seeing results. Small, stable steps, one at a time. As I said before, even if tomorrow the president tells you, okay, how much money do you want to make this thing that is called resident innovation? I said, okay, 2% of our GDP, which is my fair share compared to the European average. And he gave me half a billion in my pocket. I don't know how to spend it. I would just spoil them. So I need to make a support system Yes, money will be in the market for this, for both research and innovation. But my call to you is think of the big challenges that I, that I started before. That you're, you, are, you are missionaries. You're, we are all missionaries. We are, I mean, sometimes we don't, we don't uh, realize this, but you know, there's a cartoon that shows two men uh, working very hard on, 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 uh, on a rock to make the rock square for using it as a brick. And one asks the worker, uh, the, the one working is married, the other worker is angry and uh, in a very unpleasant uh, body language. And uh, somebody asks him, what are you doing there? He said, don't you see, I'm working with this rock to break this rock and it doesn't break. You go to and you ask the other one, what are you doing there? I said, I'm building a church. So you are building a church. You are not just fighting in the lab to secure a machine working or to get a grant or get the approval for a trip from your manager. And you get frustrated because there are difficulties. Think of your mission. That will make your life much easier and you will be smiling. Uh, so, Andreas, I know it's not easy, but for sure, doing nothing is not an option. So let's give it a try. And it's not, I'm not alone. I've been talking to the whole ecosystem for the past three months. I work 16 hours a day, Marsha, my scientific uh, support uh, uh, professional, and she's working with me. She's in my team. She knows what time she gets emails from me. During the day, I don't go to the office. I am with you. All my emails are being addressed in the night. Because I want to invite you, I want to engage you. Without you, I cannot make it. It is the first time that this is the job of someone to do it. And there is a national board chaired by Professor Patsalis and other academic and, uh, and uh, uh, business uh, figureheads. They are also on the board, of course, for the World War B. So let's see the bright side. Okay, other questions? Sorry. Translated into a technology, but, but the, the the transfer is done towards uh, improving the society. For example, uh, social uh, innovation. Not only social innovation, but also cultural innovation. Of course, yes. And this is something that uh, I hope it will be also reflected uh, a lot in the industry. 
strategy. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, also for the Horizon 2020, there was a huge discussion about cultural heritage. Should it be included? Should it not be included? At the end, not only that it was included, but it was included as a, as a trigger for uh, economy. Uh, which was it, a very good You're having a very important and, uh, and a point here. As we are moving so fast with technology and we don't know what to do with it, and we are confronted with ethical and societal dilemmas. Is artificial intelligence the right thing to do? Can I resist it? Should I resist it? Should I limit this to this but not on this? Or other ethical dilemmas? Here comes the need for social sciences and an anthropo uh, anthropos humanities. Uh, to work together in synergy. It is for the first time that we as technologists need the help to collaborate and share because we understand technology but we don't understand humanities. We don't have the, this is the left side right. Now the two parts of the brain, they need to become one. Okay, you're absolutely right. And for this purpose, and congratulations to Costas. We are creating in Cyprus the Academy of Sciences, uh, uh, Arts, and, and Literature. Yeah. Um, you say you anything, you yourself? I'm sorry. In English, Stadis Kajidri. Thank you. Stadis Kajidri, one? Yes. Thanks for the very motivating talk. How can we link our Cyprus? system to the international one and of course to the international market for our, our product in Cyprus and how can we be on the map when they consider uh, places where technology can be developed how can uh, uh, we be placed on this international map yeah your question is very appropriate although it comes in a kind of in a format that uh, uh, I, 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 I need to respond in a prescriptive way that I don't want to solve it this is how we will do it. I think it's, it's, it's not a matter of prescription, that's the way we will do it. I would say that uh, recent innovation is not local, it's global. And we as Cypriots, we need to collaborate and come across the ecosystem of other geographies. And we are doing it, especially Cyprus Institute. We are collaborating with very uh, <coughs> prestigious institutions, research institutions, but also enterprises uh, in, in, in England. Uh, we're trying to promote our relationship with Israel now. Uh, and it, it cannot be a one-way relationship. In other words, you need to have a value add to them as well. You need to put something on the table so that they collaborate with you. So you need to identify what are the key assets that I have that are of value to my potential collaborator in Israel or somewhere else. That's half the, of the question. <coughs> Even if you do that at the research level, an institutional research institution level, is not enough. Uh, something that we failed is to collaborate at business level. We don't have in Cyprus, I mean, as a sales office, it's one thing, or as a technical support. Microsoft or Cisco, or IBM has an office, and CR has an office, but these are sales offices or technical solutions, services offices. We don't have, in Israel, uh, Microsoft has uh, uh, 2,300 uh, researchers. IBM, 1,500. Intel has thousands. So there must be a reason for them. Uh, they didn't go there because you know, the, the Apple asked them to go there. <coughs> so you need to put uh, your value proposition. You as uh, <coughs> primarily academics and researchers, you put your value at uh, consciously on the table to attract your counterparts. The entrepreneurial world needs to put the value at. And I'm working on it as well. One last question. Last question. Say you mean tools and tools? Strategic tools to innovate. Financial.
financial instruments or funding or what? No, I don't need financial instruments. How to innovate, how to create the exceptional ideas and transform it into a sustainable innovation. Mm -hmm. Then my second one is has to do with the value of death. Uh, I think uh, there is an area we need to put more emphasis on it. And uh, like the important ingredients uh, to increase the value of death others is branding, differentiated branding and positioning, uh, product, product market fit, and uh, effective advertising during both launch and growth phases. Thank you very much. Very, very good suggestions. Yes. So let's uh, thank. Uh, Inspiring but challenging for our community. Uh, a lot of challenges and uh, to respond to it. There is a reception outside. We can share some wine and uh, cheese. And I'm open to continue the conversation outside. Very, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.